Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Okay, um, this one's about silver lining. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is a few people have said that they're quite uh, happy or had some positive impact on the, uh, the positive stuff I've been bringing up lately. Now, what I want to talk about is a silver lining in everything. Doesn't matter what it is, there is always a silver lining. You may not see it, but there is one there. Um, I'll give a prime example. This uh, month I got a speeding ticket for, uh, this cost me a hundred pounds and three points on my penalty, uh, penalty points on my license. Where's the silver lining in that? Silver lining is, um, I didn't go any further over the speed limit. Um, they did follow me for several miles in the hope that I did so they could get a full ban on my license. Um, the fact that I have, uh, I'm not saying which country, because <laughs> uh, the UK police, as the parasites that they are, do browse YouTube videos looking for people to admit something or um, or use uh, speeding on on motorbikes and whatever with videoing themselves. So I will not turn around and say I've been speeding in the UK. Um, I will say I have been over the speed limit somewhere um, because obviously I go to several countries. Um, but the reality is I've got away with it for years. So hundred quid, have it. Um, the end of the day, the amount of time it saved me over the years has been ridiculous. I think 70 in the UK is an absolute joke for a speed limit. Uh, my car doesn't like doing 70. It likes doing 90 to 110. Um, it doesn't like doing 70. It just feels as if it's not moving. Um, which is quite funny because a couple of days after I got the, the Mercedes over the Renault I had out on hire. Because the Renault, it, it, it got tired at about um, 90. It got tired at um, the speed limit. Um, so you couldn't really speed in it where the Mercedes, I think it would do 125 and not really notice it. So where's the silver lion? Like I said, I got away with it for so long. Uh, so what, uh, you know. I write it off as experience, will it slow me down? I'm not even discussing that because it'll leave myself open. But I would say that it will not stop me speeding in the Philippines. It will not stop me um, going at a sensible rate that a vehicle is designed for. Um, but at the same time, I've had it before where life's been pretty crap. You know, things have gone wrong and then um, Christmas used to be a perfect example. Christmas was always bad when I first um, entered work and what have you in the, for the first few years because I was still studying. I was still, you're just seen as a muppet because in this area, which is a horrible little farming community, um, there is no real jobs for skilled people. They just don't have them. They don't exist. They don't, there are not, there's not, um, there's not the opportunities there. So if you have skills, they don't want to pay for them because there's no demand for them. They were the one you go pee picking or something else at minimum wage. Back then there was no minimum wage, not that I've been pee picking, but I have done some crappy jobs. And I used to find that around November through December was always a hard time financially and emotionally draining because you can't have a good Christmas. Financially, you couldn't afford it. Um, which also gives me the drive of why I don't have bad Christmases. Christmases is something that um, I have spent since I got married, regardless of where I've been on the planet, I have been home for Christmas. And we've had some very expensive Christmases purely because I remember the hard times, I remember having nothing. Um, and when I had say have a good Christmas, I'm talking about um, parties where I can feed 200 people. Um, it's not a case of me sitting there with a big Rolex and something saying, oh, look at me, look what I've got. I share the wealth because um, that's what makes me happy, um, seeing other people happy. 
throwing Christmas parties for children. Um, they're, they're not sure how to deal with it because they're not used to having parties in that way and stuff. So what can you say about that? You know, that's my silver lining. I had it hard um, it's when work was hard and getting work, etc. Um, because you always got laid off around Christmas, which meant the money you had for Christmas, you would carry it over till February because there's no work until February. Um, and it was like that for some years. It was hard. But I don't sit here whining about it. I remember those experiences because those things drive me forward. Those things make sure I will never be unemployed again. I will never be broke again. I will move heaven and earth to make sure my family don't ever get in that same situation. And when we do have good years, we spend it. You know, um, we have the Christmas parties. We have, um, when we have a birthday party for the kids, we invite the entire neighborhood. Um, we enjoy life. And this is why materialistic stuff doesn't matter to me. Really doesn't. Um, I do buy expensive stuff now and again, by the way, as you, like I said, I mean, I'm driving a new Mercedes, which is literally brand spanking new. It came from the factory, but I didn't buy it. I was given it. It's, it's a work vehicle. And somebody said to me did it recently, did, did you buy that? And I'm like, you wouldn't catch me buying a brand new car if I had the money in my back pocket, because I don't see the value in it. It's just a vehicle. Um, would I buy a motorhome? The answer is yes. Would I convert a van into a motorhome? The answer is yes. I have the skills to convert one. But also, if I convert a reasonably uh, good condition second-hand van, I can fit it out exactly the way I want. And, and when I do this sort of stuff, the funny thing is people assume you haven't got the money to do it. It's not that I don't have the money. It's just that I begrudge paying a fortune for something that isn't worth it. You know, 60% of the value of the car disappears when you drive off a forecourt. Why would you want to buy one? Anyway, silver lining is enjoying life. You find the silver lining. Well, I said, I got a speeding ticket. Did I shout and get mad at the people? No, it's just one of those things. I don't like the police, I'll be honest with you. I see them as parasitical, uh, part of a corrupt uh, government society. I see them as being involved in every corrupt scandal that's hit the media in recent years, from the telephone sc uh, hacking scandal with the newspapers to paedophilia. Um, that is the police in the UK. I have no respect for them. They haven't earned it. If anything, I see them as criminals. Um, and it's really odd when you see some of these that actually say, I've got the uniform, I'm so... You know, they're so proud of themselves. And I'm just thinking, you're a mug. I don't respect you. Respect comes from being earned. Um, but I'm not argumentative with them. I just don't value them. As simple as that. They value themselves and they drum themselves up, which is part of society these days. This false um, misuse of words on a regular basis. You hear the word epic. You hear the word uh, awesome. You hear... Um, other similar words, you'll hear them all the time, and it is so poor. It's very bad journalism. It's poor vocabulary. There's a thesaurus if they can't think of other words, but most of the time, nothing is epic, nothing is awesome. It's just bland. It's junk. I'm ranting. I know I'm ranting. Um, but yeah, silver lining. Just look for the positives and whatever. Whatever it is, doesn't matter how hard it is. Um, I was recently talking to somebody who's had an extremely hard time. Um, now, he's come to the end of the problems he's been facing and now seeing the upside. He's moving his life forward. Um, because when you hit those places that really push you down, um, A, you learn who your friends are. So, silver lining. Is you learn who your friends are and who are fair weather friends or just people that you just don't need to know at all. Um, B, you value what you have because you realize how much is taken away from you when you don't have it. Um, C, you realize money is not everything. 
Money is nothing. People will say, oh, it's all right, well, you, you've got money, blah, blah. I've had no money before. Funny enough, as you, as you just heard, I will make sure that I'm not broke, but it's not broke because of money reasons. Because I work a little bit different to a lot of people. Money is secondary, right? Priority this year, house in Spain. Second priority, savings. Third priority, making sure that, that everything I do is sustainable. If I do those three, where does money matter? It doesn't. But to get them, you need money. So what do you drive for? Do you drive for a pay rise? Do you drive for this? The drive should be the assets themselves, nothing else. Not, I need to be paid more. I need to, because most people that need to be paid more don't actually need to be paid more. They need to think smarter and uh, spend less. Um, myself, because I need this mortgage, my wife is quite shocked that I'm living on such a small amount. I'm living on personal expense, 80 pounds a month because uh, everything's getting plowed into the property at the moment and making sure the my wife and kids are taken care of. So my own expenses are like 80 pounds a month. Now you probably, a lot of people might be shocked it's so low, but I don't need anything. I really don't. That's why when I buy shirts, they're very expensive shirts. Or I buy um, sunglasses. I mean, my these glasses are only like 12 pounds. I got these from Marcos because of those same problems in my eyesight. But my sunglasses are top of the range, polarized, all singing, all dancing, Ray-Bans. Um, they're somewhere between 100 and 200 pounds a pair. Um, I'm not buying Ray-Bans in the future because the quality is, I feel like I've been robbed. <laughs> uh, I'm sure these 12 quid ones are better quality, to be honest, but the, um, yeah, for the, the quality of the lenses are pretty poor. But at the same time, that is income outside of the the day to day. Like I said, the assets are the important, important bits because once I reach those assets, I then buy the sunglasses. I then buy the expensive shirts. I then buy new shoes or whatever else. Up until I reach those assets, I don't buy nothing. I don't need it. Um, and it, that's that's how I move forward in life. Silver lining, new shirts, new shoes, new suit. The silver lining at the end of it, like you go, oh, getting that deposit together was a nightmare. Yes, it was. It doesn't matter what you're buying, it always is. But when you buy that new suit at the end of it and you've got your house that you've just moved into, that's a nice feeling. Silver lining is those two things. The hard bits of getting there don't matter in 12 months, 18 months time because you've achieved the goal by then. And it doesn't matter what, what you're going through, there will be a silver lining in there. If there isn't one, create one. There'll be a positive outcome, but you may not see it straight away or may not want to see it because you're so angry about something, but there is one there. And that's the bit you need to focus on because that's what drives you forward. That's what keeps you positive. That's what stops people and everything else dragging you down because you've got those silver linings, which are your positive focus. And thanks for watching.